Imagine our sun swelling so large that Jupiter's orbit skims the surface and Saturn's rings almost graze a fiery edge. Now push your imagination further because real stars out there can be even bigger. Tonight we're hunting for the true giants, the largest stars by sheer size and the heaviest by mass, and we'll trace the detective work who found what and when that revealed them. Quick note before we blast off. Biggest in astronomy can mean two different things. One, largest radius, how wide a star's photosphere is. Two, largest mass, how much stuff it contains. The champions aren't the same object, and that's where the story gets wild. First, the size class. A classic jaw-dropper is V.Y. Canis Majoris, a red hypergiant so dusty and turbulent that its atmosphere looks torn by stellar winds. It's been known for more than a century, but the modern how big is it really? Breakthrough came in 2012 when Michael Witkowski and colleagues used the Very Large Telescope Interferometer, VLTI Amber, to resolve its extended atmosphere and refine its dimensions. Around the same era, radio astronomers used Watermassa Parallax to pin down its distance at roughly 1.2 kiloparsecs. Crucial because size scales with distance. Put those pieces together and you get a star with a radius on the order of 1,400 times the sun's. Translate that to our backyard. If VYCMA replaced the sun, its surface would extend beyond Jupiter's orbit. Our inner solar system, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, would be vaporous footnotes. Another Titan you'll see in record lists is UY Scuti. It was first catalogued in 1860 during Friedrich Argelander's Bonner Durchmusterung Survey at the Bonn Observatory, one of the great star mapping efforts of the 19th century. Fast forward to 2013 when Olga Arroyo Torres and team used interferometry to estimate its angular size. Combining that with then accepted distances suggested a radius often sighted between about 1,000 and 1,700 solar radii. Even the conservative end engulfs the orbits of the inner planets and sweeps out somewhere between Jupiter and Saturn. Because distance estimates have improved with newer data, modern papers tend to emphasize a range rather than a single number, but either way, this thing is colossal. Inside the Milky Way's most massive young cluster, Westerland 1, discovered in 1961 by Bengt Westerland, lurks Westerland 1, 26, W26, a red supergiant with a radius roughly 1,500 times the sun's in many analyses. W26 isn't just big, it's actively shedding material wrapped in a glowing nebula ionized by neighboring hot stars. Picture a sun that would swallow Jupiter and still be hungry. Now to the most controversial crown, Stevenson 2, 18, also called Sint 2, 18, associated with the red supergiant rich cluster Stevenson 2, which CB Stevenson identified in 1990 in deep infrared work. Several studies in the late 2010s quoted a radius around 2,150 solar radii, about 10 astronomical units, meaning the star's surface would roughly overtop Saturn's orbit if parked where our sun is. Here's the catch. Its distance and cluster membership are still debated, and for bloated, dusty supergiants, a modest tweak to distance or temperature can swing the radius by hundreds of suns. So think of St. 218 as a leading candidate for largest radius, but with an asterisk until its parameters are nailed down with the same precision we enjoy for closer giants. All these radius records raise a fair question. How do astronomers measure something so far and fuzzy? The toolkit is elegant. First, interferometry. Instruments like VLTI Amber combine light from multiple telescopes to resolve extraordinarily tiny angular sizes. This is how teams in 2012-2013 directly constrained the photospheres of VICMA and UI Scuti. Second, distance. Techniques like parallax, including massa parallax for dusty giants, fix how far the star really is. Multiply distance by angular size and you get physical radius. Third, temperature and luminosity. Spectra tell you the star's effective temperature and energy output, which cross-checks the radius. If any one of those inputs shifts, say a revised distance from new data, the final radius can change a lot. That's why careful teams often publish a range and stress uncertainties. Okay, that's the wide category. What about the heaviest star ever found? 
The current heavyweight champ is R136-01, living in the R136 cluster at the heart of the Tarantula Nebula in the Large Magellanic Cloud. In 2010, Paul Crowther and collaborators analyzed R136's blisteringly hot luminous stars and showed that R136-01 likely weighed in at around 265 times the mass of the Sun, smashing the long-assumed 150 solar mass upper limit for star formation. That discovery reshaped theories of how stars assemble in extreme nurseries. Then in 2022, Vinu Kalari and colleagues used ultra-sharp imaging to revise RR136A1's mass downward. Estimates around 170 to 230 solar masses are common in those newer analyses. Still absurdly massive, still the top of the charts, just a bit less superhuman than we first thought. And here's the mind bender. Despite its incredible mass, R136-01 is not anywhere near the widest star. It's so hot, over 40,000 K, that its outer layers are compact and intensely luminous. Its radius is only tens of solar radii, small enough to fit well inside Mercury's orbit. Big by mass does not mean big by diameter. To help your eyes scale this, imagine three overlays. Overlay 1, VY Canis Majoris centered on our Sun, its photosphere reaching past Jupiter. Overlay 2, UI Scuti, depending on which distance you assume stretching between Jupiter and Saturn. Overlay 3, Stevenson 2, 18 at the values many papers cite, pushing out to roughly Saturn's orbit, again with that caution label. Meanwhile, the mass Titan R136A1 would look comparatively compact, a white-hot glare that fits deep inside the inner solar system. So... Why do these monsters matter? Because they push physics to its limits. Red supergiants and hypergiants like VICMA, UI Scuti and W26 shed huge amounts of gas and dust, seeding their galaxies with the raw ingredients for new stars and planets. In their last acts, they're prime candidates for core collapse supernovae, detonations that forge heavy elements and send shockwaves sculpting future star formation. On the other track, ultra-massive stars like R136A1 challenge our understanding of how stars form at all. Do they assemble directly from a single collapsing cloud or through mergers inside crowded clusters? Each measurement, an angular diameter here, a parallax there, tightens the screws on our models. Now, if you're wondering, is there one undisputed biggest star? The honest answer as of today is no. Stevenson 218 might be the radius champ if its distance and temperature hold up. VUI Canis Majoris and UI Scuti are enormous with better constrained measurements. Westerland 1, 26 is another solid yardstick inside a well-studied cluster. And R136-01 remains the mass champion after careful 2010 and 2022 analyses adjusted its numbers. The fun part is that astronomy isn't a frozen scoreboard. It's an ongoing investigation. New instruments, sharper images, and better distances can shuffle the rankings without making yesterday's science wrong. They make it sharper. So the next time you look up at our perfectly modest sun, remember, there are stars out there so swollen that Saturn would sit in their photospheres like a tiny pearl in a bonfire, and stars so massive that their light outshines small galaxies yet still look compact by diameter. Our solar system isn't the measure of the universe. It's a cozy starter home in a cosmos filled with mansions, palaces, and impossible skyscrapers. If that doesn't make you feel wonderfully small and wonderfully curious, I don't know what will.